Today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to be taking the Plain Jane Yesu power supply you see on the left and turning it into the awesome sight you see on the right. We're going to be adding some LED backlights for the gauges and also taking that uh, empty knockout and putting something useful inside of that. So that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and uh, recently I decided to uh, upgrade my power supply. Um, had a, uh, a nice uh, power supply from Alinko, uh, worked uh, very well for me, but um, it was a switching power supply, and I decided to try a linear power supply. I did have a little bit of noise on 20 and 40, and, uh, or 40 and 80, and uh, switching power supplies are known to sometimes cause that. So I uh, kind of looked around, and I saw this unit from Yesu, which is also very similar to a unit from Diamond. The Diamond one, instead of the empty knockout, has a uh, adjustable voltage uh, knob. Uh, but I like this one, and uh, it had mostly what I wanted uh, on it uh, by default, so I, I picked it up. But uh, it has a couple of things that myself and, and other people who have bought these power supplies have noticed, and that is there are no backlights for the gauges. And so in low light conditions, it can be difficult, almost impossible to read the gauges. And then you got that empty knockout, and I wanted to do something about that. So I ordered some 12-volt uh, LEDs. Uh, it was a pack, a multi-pack of different colors. And I thought about the different colors, red and, and so forth. But I decided with, um, just kind of going with some of the color schemes in my shack already, decided to go with green as uh, the backup color. Uh, you know, the power light on the uh, power supply itself is green. So I decided to go with green on that, so I, uh, I, I got out one of the little pigtails that uh, it ships with, again, ships with uh, like half a dozen colors, and I did a quick test using a battery and uh, the LED, so it worked. Now, the other thing I wanted to do uh, is do something for that knockout, that just empty knockout that's on the faceplate. So I bought this little 12-volt uh, USB charger. And uh, I said, well, we can take out that knockout and, and do something useful with that empty space. So there's just a few screws around the top and sides of the unit. Uh, so we uh, went uh, around and, uh, and carefully removed all those just to take the main cover plate, uh, you know, the cover off the housing off of the, uh, the unit. Uh, again, just a few screws. So we took those out and put those in our uh, little magnetic parts tray. And just to keep everything uh, nice, neat, and organized. And uh, then we were going to take a look at working on the rest of the unit. Now, obviously, you don't have to <laughs> take a brand new piece of equipment and, and do anything to modify it or anything that might void the warranty. Uh, in fact, I would generally recommend don't do that. <laughs> um, I chose to do that in this case, even though this is a brand new unit. Um, it's not super expensive. It's not exactly cheap, but it, it's not super expensive. And I used it for uh, a week or two without making any modifications to it and uh, just decided I really wanted to have some backlights for those, those gauges. And uh, if I was going to go into it, might as well do something with that knockout. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, I looked online. I found a couple of examples of people who had done pretty much what I'm, I'm talking about in this video. Uh, so it's not a completely unique idea for me exactly, uh, but they're kind of obvious modifications you might want to make to something like this, putting some lights behind the gauges and potentially putting something in that empty spot uh, where on the, uh, the diamond version of this power supply, they have the uh, power voltage uh, uh, knob where you can regulate the, the power. Uh, but you certainly would not have to do anything like this to a, to a, a brand new piece of gear. Uh, but I decided to, to take the risk, take a chance, and uh, so far it seems to be working out just fine. So we took the screws out, lifted the, the cover off. Uh, this is the, the bare unit, you know, nice and neat. And we're just taking a look at the back of the uh, gauge housing. Uh, we're going to be mounting the LEDs right up on top there. There's the empty knockout, and then there's the 12-volt accessory. 
that we're going to be tapping off for our power. We're just going to solder things onto the, the back end of that 12 volt adapter. Uh, so it's a fairly easy mod, um, a little bit of room to work, but not a ton. Uh, here, just, uh, just again testing the, um, the LED with a 12 volt battery that I had uh, sitting around and uh, it worked just fine. Uh, again, I, I looked at several of the colors. There was red and orange and green and white and blue and and stuff. And I, I just decided with with sort of the colors that were already in my shack, um, I already had some green and stuff. So I decided, well, we'll go with green. The the power light there's on the front of that's green as well. Uh, so we've soldered the leads for the the LED on the back of the 12 volt adapter here. You see the green wire and the black wire, the additional thin greener uh, green and black wire and then we'll also um, and you can see the red circle uh, there on that and then we'll also be uh, soldering the uh, red and black leads for the 12 volt USB charger adapter to the very same points there so uh, again pretty simple you know semi safe place to uh, to do some uh, some soldering modifications there just to uh, to solder right onto the back of that and we can still uh, route the uh, the wires and, and keep things reasonably neat and uh, and out of the way and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so pretty simple mod, uh, some pretty simple uh, soldering skills. I didn't uh, didn't really have a good way to uh, to uh, to film that, but if you've done some simple soldering, there's nothing complicated here. Two wires on two points, uh, or in my case, four wires on two points. You know, two grounds and two uh, two hots, and um, the 12 volt uh, extender is already right there. Uh, here you can see in in a, a, a well lit room, you can still see the green LEDs are on and in place. Uh, of course, in a well lit room, you can see the gauges anyway. But uh, the modification was successful, and <laughs> we didn't let the magic smoke uh, out of anything, which is always nice, especially if it's a, a new piece of gear. You know, blowing up a cheap LED would have been nothing, but <laughs> uh, we didn't let the magic smoke out of the uh, major components of the power supply either. Uh, and uh, and then we'll see here in just a moment. We've got a uh, a dark shot. Uh, and the LEDs are very bright. They're, they're plenty bright. You can you can see those uh, even at an angle. Uh, it sits below me and to my left in my little rack that I have my ham equipment in here in my shack. And they're very visible. And you can see those gauges uh, at a glance. And uh, whereas before, uh, unless I had some pretty decent lights on, uh, it was pretty difficult to see them uh, and what they were reading uh, at all. So again, a nice, uh, not very expensive modification. You know, the LEDs were like eight or ten bucks for a good number of them. Uh, this is just a close-up of the 12-volt uh, USB quick charge adapter, like you might put in your car or something, or on a boat, uh, or in a go box or something. But uh, I wanted to do something with that empty knockout, since the Yaesu version of this power supply doesn't have the uh, variable voltage adjustment knob. Uh, and uh, so, again, I had seen some things and saw where they put some stuff in here. Now, I had sort of two main choices as far as what I could have done in that spot. Uh, in fact, one of our other club members, I had shown him a picture uh, of kind of what I had done. And that was one of his first thoughts was, oh, he's going to take that knockout and he's going to put in some Anderson power pole plugs. And I did think about that. Uh, I went with the USB because I've already got heavy gauge uh, wire pigtails that I can plug to the main binding post on the front there. that will give me uh, some Anderson power poles whenever I need those. And here in the shack, I've got the pigtails that I, I plug into with Andersons for each of my radios, the HF radio and the VHF UHF radio. So I can have Andersons on there. Um, and so I said, well, let me put something that will give me additional capability with this power supply. And so I decided to go with the USB chargers. Uh, you could certainly, they make these little round 12-volt uh, uh, things with Andersons, and you could certainly have gone that route. Uh, this one also shows you the voltage coming through there in the center of it. So again, just two wires. I did. Uh, it did come with these ring terminals. I went ahead and snipped those off and and shortened the wires a little bit because where it was going to get placed, it was going to be very near that 12 volt um, plug that's already in the unit. Um, I kept these little pigtails just because you never know when you might want some quick and easy ring terminals on something. But I mean, you could get throw those away if you just don't need those. Uh, so just trimmed the wire down a little bit, took off those ring terminals, and uh, then. Um, uh, took the, the the two leads like we did with the uh, the LED and just uh, soldered them to the basically the same points there on the uh, the 12 volt adapter that's inside the uh, the unit and uh, of course then did a uh, a power test just like we basically did with the uh, with the LEDs here you can see that uh, the 12 volt 
uh, adapter unit with the USB uh, uh, quick charge 3.0 plugs is um, is mounted. Uh, and, uh, you know, just snipped off those wires and, and exposed a little bit so we can do the soldering, just like I said we did with the, uh, the LED. Again, just some very simple soldering. There's nothing complicated here. And the odds of blowing anything up are not super great if you're a little bit careful um, and stay away from most of the rest of the guts of this and don't uh, go touching around on things while you have it, uh, uh, have it open and be very careful anytime you have the power turned on, of course. So here is a sort of a close-up of that, that knockout. Again, in the diamond version of this power supply, there's a variable knob on there. Uh, on this one, the Yaesu version, they just don't put that feature in there. Uh, and I just hated to see that go to waste. <laughs> uh, I just figured, well, something could go there. And I know they make those little round, different kinds of little round adapters and things. And so I thought, I'm going to put one of those in there. Now, I had a little bit of a quandary because when I went to go look at this, my hole saw, little toolkit I have, uh, the main part is broken, and I keep forgetting to buy a replacement, so I couldn't use a proper hole saw. So I had to do something else. Ah! <laughs> uh, I decided to go off-road a little bit. Uh, I don't recommend this necessarily, uh, but if you're going to do something like this, just take your time. As you can see, I drew around the uh, pretty much the 12-volt uh, adapter, and I went inside of that circle, and I used my soldering uh, uh, iron tip to melt through the plastic and I just made a ring of holes and and got the the main center plastic part removed. You can see it's very ugly and jagged and it looks terrible. Uh, and I made sure I was inside, you know, the, the hole that I was going to want to end up with. Then I carefully removed uh, the, the, the big melted uh, parts as best I could. And then I took a round file, a semicircular file, and carefully started working on that hole and kept it as round as possible, smoothed it out. And it actually worked out very nicely. I was pretty sure it would. Uh, but, it, you know, the process looks very ugly in the beginning. But I smoothed out that hole, kept checking. I kept checking very frequently. Will the uh, this little red adapter fit in there yet? Does it fit in yet? Once I got it to fit in nicely, I just smoothed out everything. And you have that little sc uh, screw-on ring. You can see it's sort of a threaded, uh, the, the housing, the red housing's threaded. And you can see the ring up there at the top. You just thread that in, tighten it down, and... Of course, then it looks completely like it's factory made and everything. It's just one of those cases where the process is ugly, but if you take your time uh, and don't panic, <laughs> uh, it can really turn out just fine. And then, of course, we needed to just do a function test. So turn the unit back on, and, of course, the LEDs come on. The uh, power is going to the uh, the charging ports, and, of course, it shows our power, 13.9 volts. Uh, it has a gauge over on the left for that as well, but this USB charger just happened to come with that. Uh, and so it looks very nice. Now, it's got the little dust cover on there that you can close up, which has a window in it, so you can still see the, the voltage there. And that was pretty much it for this one, folks. Um, just a couple of things that, for me, helped make this power supply a little bit nicer. Uh, we've got the, uh, the, the lights for the LEDs now and some extra functionality there on the front. So this is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for our videos every Friday. And we'll see you folks next time, 73.